without George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire novels serving as a guidepost for what to expect from Game of Thrones moving forward, fans are as in the dark as ever about what's coming next, footage from the various trailers and some other strong hunches notwithstanding. Consider the first three episode titles and descriptions a gift from the seven, then, or at least from HBO. Details are finally here about the first three hours of the penultimate season of Game of Thrones, and your favorite heroes and villains are front and center with healthy helpings of conflict on their plates. The first episode of season seven is called Dragonstone, directed by Jeremy Podsoir and written by series creators and showrunners David Benioff and D.B. Weiss. The episode's description, John, Kit Harrington, organizes the defense of the North. Cersei. Lena Headey, tries to even the odds. Dean Aries, Emilia Clark, comes home. All of which is to be expected. Of course, John's top priority is preparing humanity for the coming onslaught of undead ice monsters, which requires significant fortification of not just his own people in the north, but Westeros at large. Cersei, meanwhile, enters season 7 with the flashiest and most recent move on her resume the wild fiery destruction of King's Landing, but without a whole lot in terms of alliances, certainly something she'll want to figure out quickly if she's to stand a chance at seeing the light of season 8. Danny's homecoming is a foregone conclusion too, and the episode's title backs up what we already know from the season 7 trailers. The Mother of Dragons is setting up shop at Dragonstone, the original seat of House Targaryen before it was bequeathed to Stannis Baratheon, Stephen Dean. Season 7's second episode is called Stormburn, yet another reference to Dean Ares, who earned the first of her many monikers due to being born on Dragonstone years ago during a powerful storm. The episode is written by executive producer Brian Cogman and directed by series veteran Mark Mylard who helmed season 5's High Sparrow and Sons of the Harpy, as well as season 6's No One and the Broken Man. According to HBO's description, Dean Ares receives an unexpected visitor, which barely narrows things down at all. It could be John, it could be Melisandre, Karis Van Houten, who has been seen lurking near Dragonstone in the trailers. It could be Jira, Ian Glenn, returning with a cure for grayscale. Really? the possibilities are wide open. As for John, he's set to face a revolt, which helps bolster theories that Littlefinger, Aidan Gillen, and potentially even Sansa, Sophie Turner, are sowing seeds of discontent within Winterfell's ranks. Meanwhile, Tyrion, Peter Dinklage, plans the conquest of Westeros. You can go ahead and preemptively tack that scene onto Dinklage's next Emmy reel. Finally, there's the third episode of season 7, The Queen's Justice, once again directed by Mylod, once again written by Benioff and Vice. The episode's description, Dean Ares holds court. Cersei returns a gift. Jaime, Nicolage cost to Waldor, learns from his mistakes. The episode title alone as well as their prominence in the description guarantees high levels of activity from both the Mother of Dragons and the Mad Queen with perhaps the gift being linked between them. In fact, Tyrion once described himself as a gift, didn't he? Could he already be in Cersei's custody and used as a bargaining chip in her feud with Danny this early on in the season? The Queen's aside, what to make of Jaime learning from his mistakes? Lord of Light knows he's made his share, don't sleep with your siblings and don't push little children out of very tall windows should be at the top of the list of lessons learned. I bet, we'll start to see Jaime trending away from Cersei, as their final scenes together in season 6 suggested, pushing the pair closer to fulfilling Maggie the Frog's prophecy than ever before. You can learn more about the theory, which ties the Lannister twins' fate in deadly and predestined fashion fashion.